In this video, I'm going to tell you why I spent almost 200 hours painting three models and the five things that I learned whilst I did it. Now, I'm sure you've heard of Golden Demon, which is the premium Warhammer painting competition. I was lucky enough to get a ticket to go and compete against some of the best miniature painters in the world. And let me tell you, there were almost 20 Slayer Sword winners in that competition. It was a fantastic standard and I came nowhere near it. With that being said, I thought it was a really good idea to shoot this video and share not only my entry, but also some of the fantastic winners from the competition, which I'm sure you've seen on Warhammer Community. Now, this video was due to come out a week ago, but if you saw my socials, unfortunately, uh, one of the things I brought home from, from Warhammer World was COVID, which wiped me out for about a week. Uh, I'm on the men now, testing negative. So let's dive in and find out what I learned. So the first thing I learned is that it takes much longer than you think to produce a piece of the quality that's needed to compete in Golden Demon. When this whole event started, I had aspirations of taking five entries with me and that five entries became two entries and the two entries became one entry and that one entry of a five man squad became an entry of a three man squad. That's how much I completely misunderestimated the amount of time it would take to actually get something ready for the competition. Knowing how long it takes now means I can be so much better prepared for the next time. Now, Games Workshop announced the next Golden Demon competition will be a Warhammer Fest in 2023. So, barring anything untoward happening, uh, I hope to be there and I hope to see as many of you there as I possibly can as well. And it means I'll be able to compete in some more categories because I've already started my entry ready for whenever the next Warhammer Fest is. I'm anticipating it being summer 2023 because based on some of the rumours there may or may not be a new edition of Warhammer 40,000 due for release uh, at that time as well so I'm sure they want to make a big fuss about everything uh, being as 9th edition was during Covid times. To really emphasise how much I underestimated the amount of time it would take to paint these models to the standard that I wanted to get them to, I ended up having to paint in the hotel room the night before and you can see my setup here which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and whilst I was going through and attaching models to the bases, I realized that one of them didn't actually fit on the base I'd made. So Q, a uh, really rapid fix where I just took some kitchen roll, folded it up into a ball, coated the whole thing in matte varnish, uh, and then made this into some sort of rock. And I was painting this the morning of entry into the competition. Uh, just about got everything done in time, but really don't need that much stress in your life. Once I got to the competition, I learned very quickly that the standard was very, very high. Now, I'd spent a lot of time looking on social media at some of the entries, the works in progress, the finished models, and I thought that I was in with a pretty decent chance based on what I'd managed to produce. However, once I got there, there were so many more models that I hadn't even seen. In fact, the guy who won the Slayer Sword isn't even on social media, and it was such a fantastically high standard that I was really lucky to come away uh, with what I did. And we'll talk a little bit about that uh, in a moment as I'll kind of run through some of the things I learned having talked to expert painters, uh, people like uh, Richard Gray, who gave me some really good feedback on my pieces as well in terms of how I can improve for the future. And I'm sure you've seen these photos on Warhammer World. One of the things I will say is that the lighting in the cabinets was really, really harsh. Because the lighting was really harsh, it washed out a lot of the models, so you lost some of the texture and the highlights. But certainly now looking at some of these and seeing them photographed professionally, seeing them photographed by the painters themselves, the standard is absolutely phenomenally good. And this isn't just little things like the blends, it's absolutely flawless pieces in terms of their execution, their composition, some of the things I didn't even consider uh, when I was putting my models together. So it's something to take away and really look at, such as how do you compose a squad of five miniatures to look fantastic and like they're in the middle of battle, for example. Uh, rather than just doing what I did and plonk three miniatures down uh, on a plinth. So having learned that to compete, your models would need to be absolutely flawless, let's look at mine in a bit more detail. So I decided to enter a Black Templar Blade Guard squad, and I used the Sword Brethren bodies, as well as the Blade Guard kit, to give something really unique, which I thought might stand out for the judges. Now, in terms of how I executed this, I was really happy with some things, uh, and on reflection, I was really not happy with other things. So let's have a little look at how my entry panned out. So originally, I said there were going to be five members of this blade guard squad it quickly became apparent i wasn't going to be able to do five to the right standard so i dropped it down to three which is essentially what the blade guard squad starts off as in game now it doesn't have to be game legal but i thought that that was 
uh, a nice touch and out of everything i chose three models to be moving forward and one to be static in the middle because i thought that gave some nice balance to the piece in terms of what i executed really well i'm really happy with how i managed to, to do the skin and the flesh and i'm really happy with the overall look of the piece and i think for me it's probably the highest standard i've painted at but on reflection there are definitely some areas where i can improve the first thing i started to notice as i was looking at the models after the competition was that my execution in some areas was really poor so for example i spilled some red paint on the armor and i hadn't noticed to clear it up i'd left some of the highlighted areas too dark because i hadn't realized that they'd be catching light when i was painting them so overall because i hadn't given myself enough time certain things like this got missed and i ended up rushing parts of them the other thing where i really wasn't 100 percent happy was with the cloaks now there was a point in the week before the competition where i thought i wasn't going to apply the cloaks at all and then i did and once i'd stuck them on i was kind of stuck and didn't give myself anywhere to go with that so i had to finish them and one of them in particular i'm really not happy with because there's a join uh, on the shoulder pad uh, and i had to fill that join with milliped and it's not a very nice job it's painted over so at a glance you wouldn't notice it but under the scrutiny of the judges you really would notice it so that's an area i really need to improve is that gap filling uh going forward because that really wasn't uh, going to be conducive to helping me place uh, in, in the competition as it was um, it didn't even move forward to the commended stage either but without that being said I was really happy with some elements I wasn't particularly happy with how the swords turned out I think they were probably a little bit too heavy in terms of the electrical effect I tried to put on there it wasn't subtle enough um, and the kind of worn look that I went for on the tar bats and the bottoms of the cloak probably could have been executed a bit better as well so it was a little more blended together and more entwined with the cloaks so how to discuss the quality of the entries my entry some of the pitfalls that i came up against as well as some things i was really happy with let's talk about the venue now if you've not been to warhammer world it is absolutely fantastic uh, in terms of the environment it was a lot smaller than i thought it was the room where you had the golden team competition was the main area where all the gaming normally takes place and that was smaller than i anticipated it being the shop's absolutely huge, as you'd expect, and you can get all your four jewel stuff, but the real jewel in the crown is the exhibition, which was open, it was free to everyone who'd entered Golden Demon, and I absolutely loved it. I went through there three times all together, just to make sure I saw everything. Um, I took lots of pictures as well, which didn't come out fantastically well because of a combination of the lighting uh, and me rushing around and the fact that it was busy and we were trying to make sure that you know we were respectful of everyone's time so you weren't taking up forever looking at one display. So I was really, really impressed with the exhibition. Uh, everything is in there. All the heavy metal painted miniatures are in there, which is really fantastic for me as a painter to go in and have a look at um, and kind of compare things in the flesh versus what you see on the website. Um, that was really, really exciting for me. There was pretty much every model ever made was there. The displays were fantastic. Some of the 30K stuff was really, really good. The 40k stuff was fantastic. I'm sure you've seen the big, massive Astro Militarum display. You've seen the Fang uh, sort of thing as well. And there was a fantastic chapel scene as well with some Sisters of Battle against some Chaos Space Marines, which I really thought was fantastic. Uh, and then the jewel in the Exhibition Crown was Sanctus Prime, where you've got that massive display, which you're allowed to take photos, but you're not allowed to film in there, uh, of the Ultramarines facing off against a demonic and Chaos Marine uh, in incursion um, and it's it's huge it's absolutely massive i had no idea how big it was uh, until i was actually there uh, and taking photos of it it is phenomenally big and it's not just long it's vertical as well so if you do get the chance to get to warhammer world i highly highly recommend going for the exhibition about it on reflection the last thing that i learned was that details really do matter if you look at the slayer sword which is the fantastic duo between that giant and the hydra just simple things like if you look through the base and you can see that uh chris clayton who's the artist behind it you can see he's actually cut off some of the attachments of the shoes of the giant and reverse them so it looks like they're floating because obviously they're in water they're going to float they're not going to sink because they're lighter just little things like that that really help set that model apart i mean it was a fantastic piece in terms of composition execution 
the bass was amazingly fantastic. I'm still not sure anyone's actually asked him how he did that, which I'd really love to know. Um, but just how those little details really help elevate uh, a model. Um, another one was the winning entry from Alberto Moreno Font, which is fantastic in terms of the execution. But you look at how Alberto, I've stolen this from his Instagram, so I hope he doesn't mind. But if you look at it, how he's actually thought about the composition, the details along this is absolutely amazing what he's thought about before he's even put brush to miniature and as a final bonus sixth thing that i learned at golden demon is that the community is absolutely fantastic now i was really fortunate to meet some folks like guy from midwinter minis and i also made it into his video which is where i stole uh, the thumbnail for this from uh, but also meeting people who i speak to quite regularly such as zumitko uh, simon alice from attraxia painting lots of people who i managed to say hello to gondas off twitter who got loads of finalist pins and Mamicon as well. It was really good to meet fellow hobbyists, meet fellow painters and talk through some of the entries that were there, what you liked, what you didn't like, why things won, why things didn't win, and also get feedback on my own entries as well. So it was a really good, fantastic occasion. It was a shame that tickets were limited, but that was the nature of the venue. And I'm sure it was better to have that competition than have none at all. And like Games Workshop have already said, they're going to be doing this at Warhammer Fest next year. So I'm really, really looking forward uh, to going to Warhammer Fest. I really hope to meet some of you there as well. Um, I'll be wearing Painting Coach uh, gear that day. Uh, I didn't wear any this, this time. And I guess that's another thing I learned is that people don't really know who I am because you don't see my faces on videos that often. So perhaps we'll change that going forward. Who knows? If that's something you want to see, let me know down in the comments. It might be absolutely terrifying as a thought and that's absolutely okay. Just let me know. Uh, so thanks for watching this video. I hope that it's been informative for you and that you've learned something. Uh, if not about Golden Demon itself, but certainly about my entries and, and what I put in there. I was really, really lucky to come away with a finalist pin, which given the standard of entries and it was my first competition and the fact I was still painting it, the morning of the competition. I'm really, really happy with it. got a really nice pin badge. Uh, so hopefully we'll go one better next time. We'll get a commended entry. Uh, it will all depend on the level on the day. On another day, I may have got a commended entry this time. On another day, I may have not got anything at all. Uh, it really does depend on the quality that goes in there. And there's no way you can game the system. There's no way you can choose a category and hope that it's a, uh, a less competitive category because the level of competition is really, really high. With that said, don't let that discourage you. Don't let it discourage you from your painting. Go out there and if you want to enter competitions, enter competitions, get feedback and see if you can continually improve because that's all you can do really. So thanks again for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Check out my other content and I will see you next time.